we're going to draw the dorsal apparatus on my left long finger. But to do so, let's first identify where the joints are. If you will flex your finger fully and draw a, st a straight line across the apex of each joint, you will mark the axis of that joint. The metacarpal phalangeal joint is actually relatively proximal. Now before we draw the dorsal apparatus, we're going to draw the three primary muscle insertions into the dorsal apparatus. Let's start using red and draw the extensor digitorum communis, which is a tendon that's coming distally, crossing over the metacarpal phalangeal joint, continuing out straight, and going just distal to the PIP joint. From here to here, this is called the central slip, and the insertion is called the central slip insertion. We now are going to use the color blue to represent the interosseous muscles, which as we know are between the bones of the fingers. We're drawing those schematically with these blue marks, and they come from the web space and insert into the dorsal apparatus at this location. We're drawing that equally on both sides, although as we know the anatomy varies based on which finger. The third color we're using is green, and we're using that to represent the lumbrical muscle, which actually arises from the flexor digitorum profundus, so we're going to use black to represent the flexor digitorum profundus on the long finger. And the green represents the muscle, which then also goes obliquely up into the web space on the radial aspect. This is a linear insertion into the lateral band, which is the lateral edge of the dorsal apparatus. Oops. There. Now let's take this lighter blue and let's create all the interconnections between these muscle insertions. The most proximal fibers are the transverse fibers, which are just distal to the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And distal to that are the oblique fibers that end and coalesce with the central slip insertion. In addition to that, we have interconnecting fibers running in other directions that are a bit less prominent. But most of all, on each side, we have a distinct lateral band. Here on this side, we will draw it in with blue because there is only an influence by the interosseous muscles, and on the radial side we've allowed that to be green representing the lumbrical because the interosseous muscle shares some influence but it's predominantly lumbrical on that side. So these fibers are all interconnected, but what we have not drawn are the conjoined lateral bands. I'm going to draw them in red so, simply so they can be easily seen, but there is a contribution from the EDC that goes laterally to the lateral band. And there's also a contribution from the lateral band to the central slip insertion. On the cadaver, these conjoined lateral bands may or may not be clear. They are simply thickened areas of the dorsal apparatus. Now we've drawn the entire dorsal apparatus, but what we have not included are the retinacular structures. Between the lateral bands distally are fibers that are called the triangular ligament. And during finger flexion, that triangular ligament keeps the lateral bands together. There are also fibers surrounding the PIP joint that are called transverse retinacular fibers, and they prevent the lateral band moving dorsally or upward, whereas the triangular fibers prevent the lateral band from moving volarly. 
finally, there's one additional structure called the oblique retinacular ligament that runs from the volar aspect of the PIP joint obliquely parallel and with the lateral band and inserts along with the terminal tendon insertion. This oblique retinacular ligament occurs on both sides of the finger and its purpose is to coordinate motion between the PIP and DIP joint. So even though we can identify the individual muscle power going into the dorsal apparatus, once it's blended together, it becomes very difficult to sort out the specific muscle contribution because they all must work together. The one structure we have not included are the sagittal band fibers that are the fibers that hold the extensor digitorum communis in place over the the metacarpal phalangeal joint. They go around the joint and, and encircle it completely and insert into the volar plate. They keep the extensor digitorum communis stabilized centrally at that joint, particularly during flexion. The transverse fibers here and the oblique fibers are more active based on the position of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. 